Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel, Hazel and Aka Design. I am um, going to sh do a very uh, hopefully quick and easy project today with potential to, um, to provide a lot of pieces, goodies, that can be used to embellish and decorate. Now in this case, uh, because I'm working in Christmas journals, it um, it's all Christmas related. But before I get to that, let me show you, and I, if you've, you've probably seen this before, if you've watched any of the videos, I think I've used them a few times. This is coffee dyed, um, just cotton that has been stamped and a little frame sort of with just a running stitch. Oh, here's a little bit of, um, oh, what do you call it? Like uh, seed stitch on that one. The rest I think are just all basically stitches around these small stamps. So these things, if you do them ahead of time in a big batch, they're great to have ready to use for uh, clusters or just as well tabs you know anything any place that you need a little extra something that is very definitely homemade handmade so I have been as you know probably uh, for the last few videos I've been saying that I keep finding Christmas stuff so even now, just before turning on the camera, I found more stamps. But I'll show you what I've done in preparation for the video. So a lot of these things ha um, either were very well cleaned or were never even used. So it's kind of important to test the stamp first. And I thought, well, rather than, you know, just wasting that effort on... Um, scrap paper, why don't I do it on something where I can actually use it? So I have this, uh, you know, a large sheet of coffee dyed ledger paper. So, I mean, I don't think I've yet encountered a stamp that I wasn't impressed with. So these are the test, like the first impressions on paper. Now, where there's space, obviously, I'll fill it with something else. Um... This angel is really nice, and that's a block stamp. Obviously, wait, wireworks. Stampendous. Um, so those, then sometimes on a, well, I'll show you soon. I do a few in a row, and I've learned not to be so cheap with the, the substrate, whether it's fabric or paper leave enough room to actually separate them. Now, I think there's enough room on top to do another row of small ones, and obviously there's room there. This is really old paper that came out of a, oh, I think it was a 100-year-old scrapbook that I bought through auction. And um, so I've got those papers separated, and I thought, well, okay, let's do it on that. That's another piece just ready to go, another piece ready to go. And then here are a few bigger ones. So um, what I would probably do here is use a tearing ruler. In this case, I'd leave the perforated thing on the side, but I've left enough space that I could easily separate them and not ruin them in the process. So as I did that on there, I also stamped them on fabric. Now this, uh, I have several pieces like this with this hem. This was like, I guess back in the day they would have been called the luncheon cloth and they had a little teeny bit of embroidery on them. Anyway, um, you never know when you want a hemmed edge. So I didn't cut that off, but I will make a decision when I'm ready to use them Actually, I should do that right now because I was in t I did thread a couple of needles with black thread and I was intending to just hem around one or two of these. 
Now, I suppose for the time being, I'll probably leave the hemmed edge on there uh, just because, you know, just because the hem. Oh, boy, I cut that one kind of far. Um, the hemmed edge is far enough away that I can still do my stitching around. This could be like with this right angle here, this could be like a tuck. And uh, mind you, it would probably need to be back to give it a little more body, but that's a possibility. So right now I'm gonna leave those options open. Uh, quite often in the past, I thought I knew what I was doing. I thought I knew what I would want to do. So I would just quickly, you know, sort of <laughs> burn, burn bridges in a sense, and then realize, oh, there's no coming back from this. So eventually I learned that, you know, it's better to leave some decisions for the last moment. Now this is a very, you know, kind of loose woven thing. Um, not a great deal of body to it, but surprisingly it took the ink quite well. And I, for all of them, I use my bla Jet Black Archival ink. I, what else have I got? I, well, I guess I could have tried some other colors, but I just, for simplicity's sake, I just left it at black because I thought I would be doing, you know, black stitching. But of course, a person could color coordinate uh, the ink and the, um, the ink and the thread. Now, because this was cut kind of, you know, willy-nilly, um, you can see that the fringe that I've just made by pulling threads is uneven. Now, if you like that look, you can leave it. If you don't, you can straighten it out. There's enough uh, fabric here that I could... Um, you know, I could pull quite a few threads and still not really hit the design. So again, I will leave that option open. Anyway, I should stop doing that and show you the others I've stamped. Um, same fabric, another corner. So it's got hem on it. And I, I just turn things the way that make the most sense in terms of um, layout and fit. So I deliberately, the ones I, the samples I showed you, the non-Christmas ones that I showed you, are all fairly small and sometimes they just don't carry the day. This one is really cute. I, I didn't even, I didn't even know I had it to be honest. Um, so I thought a few bigger ones would be a good decision because sometimes, you know, if this ends up being the focal point on something, it does need to be sort of the right size. And then here are a couple of label type ones, uh, a sentiment and a reindeer. And that's what I've got done so far. And I figured, boy, I better turn the camera on before I use everything up that I was using or that I, the fabric that I had on hand and then have nothing to show you. So I've got a few stamp blocks ready. Now this one you can see is long and skinny. This is a long, whoops, a long repeating phrase. Mary, 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 Mary. Um, oh, this was a scrap piece of paper that was on a packaging. So I just stamped this a couple of times. Now this, because it kind of has that label look, I would probably just fussy cut around these two. Um, so I also, on this one, I've got, this one's kind of crooked. I have like five smallish things on here. This one I've got three on, well, you've seen this, Naughty and Nice, the gift and the 
dove. So let's just, um, I mean, I'm sure you've all done this, so and you probably have more experience stamping than I do. Goodness sakes. I should try that one too. Um, okay, so I have a bunch of these strips. It was an, an odd shape because it had some, I think this might have been, is this the one that had some embroidery on it? And I cut a, cut around the embroidery pieces and that's why I've got these oddball shapes here. But again, we know there is nothing too small that we can't use. Maybe I'll avoid this one. It's got pink on it. A few more pieces off this. Oh, I didn't look, whoops, I didn't look for any. But you know <coughs> that we all, <coughs> excuse me, we all have millions of um, little strips. Either book page margins. <coughs> oh, brother, my voice. <coughs> Sorry. Either book page um, margins or um, you know stuff like this. These are all quite neutral, different tones, but <clears throat> different sizes, different finishes to them. <clears throat> this is also another good thing too. If you've got your, your mass out, your stamps or ink, everything out, you might as well do a few of those on paper. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, okay. So let's see. Well, this Whoopsie. Will this fit on here? Okay, well this, this, and um, I just have a piece of this sort of fun foam or whatever it's called for a little more cushioning. Okay, so my usual practice is to stamp first on paper. That will be too small, so I'll use this. <clears throat> so basically I just and I I have to say now it might change because you're here watching um basically the stamping I think has been going really well so that's almost like inviting the stamping gods to curse this um and jinx what I'm doing here, but we'll see. I did re-ink that pad not so long ago. Uh, what I'm going to do is have this fairly close, because I'm not sewing around these, obviously. I'm just going to tear, or if, the, if it turns out they're a little too close, I will cut between them if tearing isn't possible. So basically, I've got winter wishes, Merry Christmas, may all your Christmas wishes come true, no peeking, and um, tis the season. Oh, I wondered about this one. <clears throat> it looked, it looks different. It looks, see, it almost looks kind of all dried up. It's certainly a different color. That was, yeah, that came out of this set, so it'll be, I should try one of those snowmen and see if they work. This looks, yeah, a little suspect. <clears throat> Um, the others are fine. So let's see what we get here. So after doing that thing on paper, I re-ink. And maybe because <clears throat> I now have one missing in the middle, Maybe I'll just do two at a time. Uh, 
And again, you know, I don't have to do the little running stitch around each stamp either. They can just be a frayed edge or even a cut edge. I hope that you are well. I had to take my car to um, a mechanic today. I've got my, my road trip across the province later this week. So, mind you, you... It may, oh, look how nice that is. You may be watching this at a different time and maybe I'm maybe I'm already there, maybe I'm back, who knows. Um, yeah, the brakes have been squeaking and, um, and this isn't, well, I was gonna say this isn't judgmental, but it probably is. Um, you know, I don't want, heads turning when I'm stopping at a light or an intersection or whatever. I don't want it to be like, oh brother, what is that? Trailer trash? Like, you know, it was just, it was getting kind of dumb. Oh, see now this one, in case those have some residue on them, I can't exactly do what I was planning to do, but this should work fine. Um, yeah, so touch wood there was no squeaking 50 kilometers driving after that and no squeaking so I think I'm good um, anyway I did also manage to stop into uh, the thrift store in that town oh see those are nice Oh, I forgot. Oh, no, I did do it on there. Um, maybe I should try one of these. This one is going to be too big. These round ones, no, I, the punch is not within reach. Um, these were, now I have a little doohickey somewhere. This was a punch uh, stamp combo, a Martha Stewart thing. So I think you're supposed to stamp it first and then punch it out or something. I didn't try that part. Let's just see what happens if I try a snowflake. <clears throat> I need another block. Oh, there's no sticking going to be happening there. Let's see if I can just do it without. So, yes, in that, at that thrift store, they have a tiny, teeny, tiny, and I mean teeny, tiny little room um, that they keep their books and... Um, the um, um, you know VHS tapes and uh, CDs and stuff like that in so it's very tiny and um, anyway you know every week or whatever I don't know how often they do their sales but everything in the book room more like book broom closet uh fifty percent off so I did score some books. And I think a box of cards. Can't even remember what else I got. Um, anyway, I will be doing a thrift haul video, I'm sure. Oh, that's nice. Cool. So with this one, well, let's just cut it up right now. Because that is part of what I'm trying to show you here. I just want to get through the hem. Actually, if I'm tearing, I can't exactly tear a circle, so some of these might end up without without hems. 
And in a case like this, I might just, you know, cut it and tear it, and then I'll have a nice frayed edge all the way around. This fabric is so nice. Um, you know, and the same same thing would work if you coffee done um pillowcase or a bed sheet and you'll get exactly the same feel cool 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 uh let's do that about there and it doesn't even Oops, get too distorted and stretched out of shape when you do it. So that's another nice thing. Some things, as you know, don't tear very well. Okay, I would probably, I'd either put something there or even it out, you know, when I decide where I'm using it. <clears throat> I can't believe how hoarse I am. This is the first video. This is, this is, you're almost the first people I've been talking to today. So, anyway, I hope that um, you're doing well. I, uh, oh, I also went to uh, Dollarama, <clears throat> and I found, but that's probably not within reach either. I kind of like buying wrap, uh, wrapping paper that is flat. Uh, yes, you get the creases in it, but then you don't have to worry about storing those rolls. You know, they don't have that much paper on them, but yet those, those rolls don't fit anywhere. Um, okay, I haven't done this one. Will it fit on? Yeah, let's try that one. Okie dokie. I, um, another thing I wanted to do in the way of a video was, um, using some of those Christmas punches and uh, embossing folders. However, when I was fooling around with my Sizzix, <coughs> trying them out, I realized that one that I had, one embossing folder that I had, uh, thought was Christmas was in fact happy birthday <laughs> so much for not reading carefully um, so I really don't have much in the way of embossing folders and uh, kind of even fewer dies let's maybe do this one up here And then some of those punches, and they were all Martha Stewart. You know, I didn't really think she put her name on crappy stuff. But again, even though they looked good, they were pro they were used. So I think two of them are. I couldn't get I couldn't get them to work. Um. And there were those edge punches. Uh, well, well, one of those isn't worth a darn. Uh, that's really nice. Oh, I was going to do it in fabric. I'm talking and losing my train of thought here. So, you know, that might not be a very productive video if... Oh, and then I had some snowflake dyes and the company... Oh, I moved it out of my way. I cleaned up and I moved it out of my way. Oh, what the heck was the brand name? Really crappy stuff. I mean, I think, well, I don't know. And part of that is operator error. I know that because I haven't, there's a kind of a crease there, so I'm trying to stretch it. Um, I am late to the game in terms of card making and, um, you know, die cutting and all of that. So I know during the hundred day thing, I did some of that 
and I was so frustrated and I had a flurry of people writing comments saying, well, you should do this and you should do that and you should do this and you should do that. Now, I hope that I had the sense to write that down somewhere because now uh, I don't remember darn thing about what anyone said. Although I think some one of the solutions might have involved foil. But I'll tell you, I out of seven of those snowflake dies, I don't. Th I think I got two that, you know, I didn't ruin in the process. Um, on this paper, now we're we're really talking about fabric today, but and hamming. Let's find a nice piece of. I want to try that, Mary, 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 Mary. <clears throat> short. This is something old. I wonder if th this might be from, that might be an ancient, well, I'll try. I was going to say that I think that might be off an ancient uh, book jacket. Oh, why is that not sticking? I've only used it once. Oh, that annoys me. Um, you know, back in the day when uh, dust jackets were not that plasticized stuff. Anyway, I hope to get a few more videos done and scheduled before I leave so that Such a skinny little stamp, the block fell. Well, you probably saw it happen, so. Let's just hope that it works. I can't afford to lose a strip of paper, you know. <laughs> Those dots go uphill there. So is that how I put it on here? Anyway, I can I can rip it off there. Let me try that again. I think I wobbled it a little too much. You're not supposed to rock a stamp. So that was again operator error. It continues to be unbelievably gorgeous here. I think the high today was something like 22 or 23. It's almost six o'clock, uh, you know, supper time. <clears throat> As I'm doing this, okay, don't rock. So, uh, yeah, it's one of the, it's that time of year where, you know, in the morning you may need a jacket well, you definitely need a jacket. And then by afternoon, you're peeling the layers off and are end up in short sleeves. So, I mean, I'm not at all complaining because this is a blessing. Now, unfortunately, I'm running out of time. Well, maybe that's, I guess that's the stamp. Anyway, very still very usable. Uh, I don't think, do I have a very narrow? Hmm. I wonder if it would work to, hey, why don't I try a piece of ribbon? Yeah, I have such a mess here and uh, around on this desk, around me, in the bedroom. I have a couple of lists uh, on the go, what I need to pack, you know, in terms of personal stuff. And um, I bought a little bit of food today. 
<coughs> and then, of course, what crafting supplies am I going to take? Because that is always my primary focus. Oh, that's nice. Now, I won't touch it. Let me do another section. Oh, excuse me. Um, Canmore has a nice thrift store. I've scored many things there over the years. It'll be interesting to see if their prices have um, risen like everywhere else. I think their book prices are not very affordable anymore. But I know that in the beginning when I would go, like a lot of, like the, there, of course, this unit that I go to has a kitchenette. So there are pots and pans and, you know, coffee maker and all that jazz. But I didn't really know. Do I have to bring my own condiments? Do I have to, you know? So that's kind of stuff. The first year, I also forgot to uh, to bring an extension cord. So I ended up, you know, buying some of those kind of missed or forgotten items at the thrift store because that's basically the quality and kind that I needed and the amount of money I wanted to spend. Oh, I should tell you a story. Or maybe I should save it for the next one. I don't know how long I've been at this. This is the last stamp. I'll let that dry thoroughly. I'll just, um, you've seen enough stamping probably to last you a lifetime. So let's find, I got a couple needles threaded. Now one is like a real, a real sewing needle, but you can see that the thread is pretty fine. This is coarser thread. The label is off, so I don't really know what it is, but I ended up using, I couldn't find it. I mean, I've got three million needles, but so I ended up using this one with the big eye, but I think that it's fairly blunt, so it is probably not going to go in very well. I've done a knot. Um, now, you know, I can do it with my knot at the back or I can do it with my knot in front you know, just for an extra little whatever. So I'll just, I don't know, I, I tend to start things down at the bottom right-hand corner, like if I'm sewing around a tag or something. And I'm just going to do a running stitch. Now this uh, stamp and this little piece of fabric is bigger than those others that I showed you. So consequently, I can make, you know, longer stitches. And to save um, some effort, and I don't know if time, a person can also do sort of what I did, go in and out, in and out without lifting the needle. And okay, so the other way would be to, to do a stitch, pull the needle through, bring it up again. It might be a bit straighter that way, but it does, I think what I should do is make some irregular stitches because that's probably what's really going to happen here. So if I do some longer ones and shorter ones and maybe some wobbly ones, it will, um, Yeah, it'll look more hand done. And it'll also take the pressure off. Boy, I hope I have enough thread here. It's like I stole this piece of thread. 
I have so much thread. <clears throat> I had a lot of my own thread. And then when my mom died, I um, was the one that ended up with her sewing machine and, and uh, sewing cabinet. So whatever she had in the way of sewing supplies became mine. And then when her sister was moving out of um, her own uh, home, I guess, I guess maybe you'd call it a senior's condo or something, um, into a lodge, <clears throat> I ended up with a lot of her sewing, and she had much more in the way of sewing supplies. So I've got thread to last me a lifetime. <clears throat> so this is, I mean, you don't need any skill whatsoever to do this. Um, it's just in and out. And look how, what a difference that makes already to how, how the finished thing will look. And again, this is good um, front of the TV work, or you could probably do it if you were a passenger in a car, uh, or if you're just listening and looking up occasionally at YouTube or Netflix or whatever. So I think what I'll probably end up doing is packing probably the rest of the things I stamped, the, the cloth ones that I've stamped, um, a spool of thread and a needle, and uh, take some of this with me too, because I can easily um, do this. Although I have to say that the light in that place is not good. It's, it's, it's like being in a hotel room. And I don't know if you've ever tried to read <laughs> by those bedside ta those bedside lamps, but you know it's it's not a true reading lamp. <clears throat> Let me do the in out in out in out. Finish this up so that I can let you go. I want to. Um, thank and acknowledge uh, new subscribers, returning subscribers, other YouTubers who are, who have um, done shout outs uh, uh, to me recently. <clears throat> Kim Newberg is a Canadian uh, crafter and I tagged her in the uh, brainchild challenge of Carrie the Paper Monkey and I can never say enough about Carrie. Um, Carrie came up with a challenge called Tag Your Turn. So basically, you do a tag, and he's, I just love that. How come this looks so much nicer than these I did before? Maybe just because it's bigger. Um, anyway, you, um, you do a tag, any size, any style, and you know, sort of either do it kind of on camera or if you've done it ahead of time, then you explain your process or whatever. You tag Carrie because, I mean, or you use her hashtag, I mean, tag your turn. And then you tag another, uh, oh, what did I do here? <sighs> another YouTuber and essentially you're throwing down the gauntlet and you're asking them to do the same thing. I'm going to leave that little loop there because I'm, no one's going to see. <clears throat> yeah, I like that. Maybe as I'm just finishing up here, I can, I'll do another one with the thicker thread and see what that looks like. Um... Maybe I should try it on this loosely woven. That's very big. Do I have a smaller one? Oh heck, if I don't finish you'll 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 understand. 
anyway, um, so yeah, um, oh, and my big thick needle, I should maybe do a better knot. Um, my big thick needle will go through this loosely woven fabric without any too much effort. Just enlarge my knot so it doesn't come through. Anyway, the other day Kim did her uh, tag and I saw it. And anyway, I, I'm really pleased with some of the cross-pollination that's happening between... Um, maybe I'll go up this time. Between some of my new American buddies, Carrie, Carol, Angela, Sarah, Sierra, Dale, Pam. Um, so yeah, I tuned into, to, uh, what was it about now? Half the time I'm doing these things in bed while I'm doing my tens machine or my heating pad so now i've gotten smart i keep a piece of paper except it might not look like i'm that smart today a, a piece of paper and a pen beside the bed well there's always pen and paper there but now i'm writing down okay whose video did i watch who do i have to comment on you know the next morning when i fire up the old computer so Carrie was doing a video. Oh, I know. She was doing a, a spread in her art journal. And she thinks that she can't collage. She had said as much about my video that, you know, that she can't collage to save her life kind of thing. And I said, well, <laughs> number one, that's not true. And number two, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. It's obviously a misdiagnosis. <laughs> you bought into some kind of a, a goofy message. So yeah, she was waxing poetic about me. So, and and the and the nice thing is that um, a lot of people have so much respect for for people like Carrie that when she says, "Please go and do this." Like good little soldiers, they go and do it. They they check out a channel and they subscribe. So, hey, what's not to love about that? So if you haven't subscribed to Carrie or Crinkled Path Journals or The Traveling Crafter or Pam Van E or New England um, Junk Journals or Cooley... Wait, I don't want to say it wrong. <clears throat> Cooley Craft Corner, then by all means, do it. Um, another channel, um, if you're interested in collage and, and uh, art journaling and stuff like that, is Martha Makes Art. <clears throat> I had tagged her in the What's in a Name, and she just did her video not so long ago. So... That's another one to check out. Uh, anyway, I'm going to stop there because my voice is not getting any, any better and you guys very clearly know how to do this all by yourselves. So I just wanted to remind you to pull out your stamps, pull out your ink. Uh, I believe you'll probably get better results using archival ink than you will using, you know, distress oxide and, and these sorts of um I do I've got fire brick right here. no I have candy apple here should I just quickly let's just see if I know what I'm talking about it's probably going to prove me wrong I'm just touching this one now that looks kind of nice and juicy. This is going to be upside down. Oh, I can do it here. Uh, 
uh, you know, it depends which ink you have, but, um, and what color you want. Oh, see, that's okay. I mean, the S could have been better, but maybe it's kind of one of those weathered ones. That almost looks more orange than candied apple, but... Anyway, um, yeah, pull out your stamp pads, pull out your stamps. And again, if you're not working on Christmas, it doesn't have to be Christmas. It can be butterflies or, or flowers or sentiments or whatever. And um, take it that step further. If you're doing a test one on paper, do it on paper where you can actually use what you're, you know, assuming it turns out well that you can use it. Uh, do it on different types of fabric. Uh, one thing I haven't done here, do it on strips of paper. And uh, one thing I didn't have here is scrapbooking paper to try, but anyway. Okay, guys. Um, we will see you in the next one. I'm going to have a hot drink. Help my throat a little here. Anyway, thanks guys. See you in the next one. Bye.